ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أأنبئكم بخير من ذلكم للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our souls to this moment الحمد لله رب العالمين We commence this program and gradually we hone We be bringing to you inspiring, thought-provoking Uh, lectures that are meant to stand all out, that are meant to prove to the world that we Muslim sisters, we are ready to bring a change to the world. We've been reiterated all the while that our team for this year, National 80 Hev, is the menace in the world, Muslim sisters on call. And right with me now, we're going to have a session now that is tagged guidance and counseling. And to do that for us is our mother. She has been here with us recently, yesterday, where she took us through a topic, the presence of woman. But what she'll be taking to us today is my in-law and I. That's the G and C sec- section. The lecturer is no other person than my, our mother, Elijah Basera to rob you. She had a degree at the University of Lagos State. And she's a teacher, like I said, well, I introduced her earlier on. She's a motivational speaker and a caregiver. The, uh, presently, she's the vice principal at Hostel Administration at Vangas Academy, Odo Shegolu, this main line. Amen. <laughs> We pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the evil of our souls and our deeds. Amen. And from the pandemic that is ravaging the whole world. Amen. Allah has power over everything. It's how you are consumed. May he in his power, in his infinite mercy, forgive us our sins and wipe out the pandemic from all over the world. Amen. Uh, my dear sisters, I greet us in the best mode of greetings, the greetings of the people of paradise. May Allah count us among them by saying assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our guardians and uh, counseling session this evening that we are rubbing minds on constitute a part of the menace in the world. One of the menace of the world is instabilities in homes. And you discover that one major aspect that causes instability in most some home is the Strange interactions between in-laws and their wives mm. or the wife and her own in-laws. First and foremost, we must get the perspective right that Islam established the family, it goes beyond the bride and the groom alone. And this is the reason why the brides must have a wali whose permission must be sought So hence, marriage in Islam involves families, not just the two individuals that are coming together. And that's why you discover that even in the verses of the Quran, Allah gave responsibility to the wali and family members that when issues happen, 
they must be in a position to settle situations between the couples themselves. So part of the meaning of our time is the inability of wives to manage their in-laws and the way mother-in-laws handle their daughters and son-in-laws, thereby creating instability and damages in the home, fulfilling the wishes of Shaitan against the Muslim family. It is in, recorded in a very authentic hadith of Islam that Shaitan sent his agents, his boys, out on a daily basis to go for operations. Mm. When they come back later, they come and give reports. And then the one that will get the best of award for that day is one that succeeded in separating a family, in breaking down a particular home. The effect of broken home is nothing to write home about. That's part of what creates the menace in our society. So we shall be looking at the following from the Islamic window. How the wife should relate with her father and mother-in-law. And how to relate with brothers and sisters-in-law. And lastly, how the mother-in-law should relate with her daughter and son-in-law. In-law, to a large extent, enjoy relative status Islamically. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran chapter 4 verse 23. He said, prohibited for you, to you in marriage, are your mothers, daughters, sisters, fathers, sisters. That's our aunts. Mothers, sisters, maternal aunts. Brothers, daughter. Sisters, daughter. Your foster mother who suckled you. Foster sister. The daughter to your foster mother. Your wife's mother, mm. your mother-in-law, your stepdaughter, a daughter to your wife from another man that is under your guardianship, born of your wife to whom you have gone in. So you, from this particular verse of the Quran, you can see, even, it even includes the wife of your sons, the sons that are your own blood sons. You can't marry their wives. And two sisters in wedlock at one at the same time. You cannot marry two sisters, children of the same parents, the senior, the junior, in the same house as your wives. So you can see that from Islamic point of view, these people, category of people that we call in-laws are relatives in the particular family. And that is why when Allah SWT was given injunctions on the verses of hijab, Allah excluded part of those that we, we excluded our father-in-law from the category of people that we can, we, we, that can see us without putting on hijab. Though, those are father-in-laws that are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that has good understanding of the deen. Not forgetting the fact that these verses came down when the Muslims have already got to Medina, and of course they understand the, the core of the, the deen itself. So we can see from this, that the category of people that we are going to we are be relating with as our in-law are supposed to be treated as relatives. So the issue of, I don't even want to meet my mother-in-law, that's the slogan. Mm. And so, ah, the, the, the woman should rather die before I, I get into that house. So. Or else, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. As if you are coming from your house to find a war, a war. and displace the mother that the, 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 food, the, road, the road to paradise for the son. The woman that suffered to bring up her own son for, to a position where you feel, I can marry him. Mm. Yes. So you are planning a displacement. That is not an Islamic mentality. So my dear sisters, first and foremost, Islam makes us to realize that his parents are your parents. Treat them the way you will treat your parents. Yes. Treat them with respect. They will in turn honor you. They will in turn honor you. Care for them. Think of their welfare. Encourage their son to give them their rights. I read a very beautiful story. I said that's my story of the year on social media. Of a man that traveled and for three, four days he kept on calling the wife and the wife did not pay the call. He was so anxious, he was asking everybody yes, what yes, happened, yes, what happened, yes, I can't yes, get to my wife. I remember that. He ended up coming into the house and discovered that the wives are fine. And the wife asked him, the way you were calling me, did you call your mother? Allah, Akbar. As you were anxious of us, she's also anxious of you. 
go back and see her first. And that is the woman that wants the husband to have the maximum of reward of relating with his parents. That thinks of the hereafter of the husband. The man is not yours alone. He has parents. He has relations. He has family. Care for them. Encourage their son to give them their rights. Know their likes and their dislikes. And work with them within the ambit of that. Such that it will reduce the high level of conflict when you know that mama does not like beans. Why are you cooking beans for her? For her to come in to visit you, you then feel that they have to take permission before entering their, parent, their son's house. By the time you give them what they don't like, they will not come next time. Mm. You are driving away mercy from your house. Allah. We should respect their culture. So long as this culture does not go against Islamic teachings. For example, some parents will insist we come home for Eid and Adha. They want to see everybody. My own mother-in-law, my first year in marriage, we got home very late from Kaduna, a day to Eid. Mama losing the ram and said the ram should go away. Oh. I have not seen my son. I have not seen the daughter of the other person I took away. What will I tell the parents? Mm. No. The other children have to tie the ram in somebody else's house, oh. waiting for us to come. Unfortunately, that was our era where there is no cell phone. There was no way they could locate that we were already on the road. Wow. But she was already anxious. So it is very, very important. We should respect their culture. So long as they want to see their grandchildren. Create time to take them there. Let them play with the, with the mama. Welcome mama to your house, no matter how difficult it is, to interact with the grandchildren. You only need to put measures into what can go wrong in doing that. Going home for eating a handout festival, sharing meats, attending family gatherings, and cooking together. Those were not things against Islamic teachings. Be diplomatic in rejecting those ones that are un-Islamic from them. For example, the, the issue of kneeling down. My dear sisters, if we do say, may Allah grant us wisdom Amen. to handle every situation that we find ourselves. There was a, this part of my particular sister that once mama is coming, from here to a distance of 500 meters, she has started all sorts of uh, desecrations and dancing. Oh, mama is come, oh, mama is come, oh, is come oh, this, this, and that. She has collected bags. Oh, you, you should, must be tired of from that far distance. So she has bought much water. What will you eat? And mama will not eat uh, kinikon. I'm going to prepare something special for mama. Then one day, one of the co-wives of mama in the family, uh. that's all that. That's your, your daughter, your daughter doesn't have respect. She cannot leave now for somebody. Mama said, eh, she doesn't need that. Me, I did not know. Allah Akbar. Me, I did not know. If, if, if those that are kneeling down, I don't even want their kneeling down. This one that she's doing is okay for me. Allah Akbar. Because, of course, those that are kneeling down will abuse them. They will cost them. They cannot send them on errands. They cannot do anything meaningful for them. I'm not saying the Muslim wife should be a slave mm. to the family of the husband. But treat them the way you want your parents to be treated. Don't forget the fact that you call have brothers and they have wives. Pay them visits. Buy them gifts. The rest of them told us. Exchange of gifts, bring oh, loves. Oh. Whoever you give gift today, even if she hates you, she hates your hijab, she hates your non leaning down, she hates you not coming to bear her party. But giving her gifts and giving her things that other wives will not give her, over time she will come to love you. And that's what Allah SWT taught us. In Surah to Busila, verse 35, 36. So, let your house be welcoming. Don't be such a wife that may I come into her house, she does not want to see anybody. She is not interested. She, she is going to be frowning. She is not welcoming. They are coming to their son's home. And you are supposed to be an assistant to your husband in the entering paradise. So, let your house be welcoming. Let the house be neat and avoid being lazy. I know of mother-in-law who cannot eat in their children's home because the wife is dirty. Mm. As Muslim women, we should remember that atuhur, shatul iman, mm. cleanliness is part of our faith. Let our kitchen be neat. Let our sitting room be neat. Let our toilet be neat. It's not a situation where you bring crop from your kitchen and then you will start looking at it. There is a black, black kitchenness on one side there is uh, oil on the other side, and I mean, so to even drink water, to even sit down, 
will be scary. Then we should be humble and put up good characters. Let us look at our wing of humility. Let us not be arrogant to them. Even if we think we are better than the family that our husband comes from, we saw them before putting our heads into such families. Let us lower our wings in humility to these parents. And let us be good to them in character. Let us be patient. You will be in their shoes someday. Let's be patient with them. Sometimes some of these in-laws, either father or mother, old age salinity is beginning to turn on them. They may put up attitudes that could be, uh, could be nauseating to you. Mm. They could do things that could be irritating. But once you study their stage and you realize that they are not even doing these things out of uh, maybe just being wicked to you, even if they are, by the time you are patient, Allah SWT says, in Allah Ma Sobri, Allah is with those that are patient. And patient is synonymous to success. When we are patient, we will succeed. So you should realize that the parents, father and mother-in-law, they are your husband's paradise. Help him to gain maximally from them so that you will both be husband and wife in paradise. Then the other areas are his brothers and sisters. The brother-in-law, the sister-in-law. We should be good to them at the same time. They are his brothers. They are his siblings. Don't be the road in between him and his brothers. Don't seek after the discussion between them mm. as brothers and sisters. Let's don't start proposing into what is going on within the family, except what is open to you. Let your home be welcoming. When they come, give them whatever you have in the house, be it food, be it drinks, be whatever. And that is even the way the Prophet taught us to welcome our guests. Even if they are not our family members. So they are, road, they, they, they are things that was of evil from our home. There was a particular companion that the wife complained of too much visitors in their yes, house. Yes, and the Prophet said, okay, go home and tell your wife I'm coming to be her guest. Mm. The Prophet took some companions there. She was busy, the Prophet is coming. Yeah. She was so happy. She prepared all sorts of things. When the companions of Salam finished eating and they were leaving, the Prophet said, told your husband, tell your wife to come and observe what is going on of your house. Mm. And back following the visitors were different kind of dangerous animals that she saw with her own eyes. So, welcoming visitors, if that can be so rewarding, then what becomes our family members? At the same time, we should be humble to them too. But for the male, we should observe the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, the brother-in-law is He's dead. dead. Mm. We must not expose our aura to them. So it is not part of humility. It is not part of being welcoming that the brother-in-law will come and sleep in your house when his brother is not around. Shaitan flows in the blood of human beings the way the blood flows in the vein of everybody. So we must mind that particular aspect. Then, for the daughter, for the mother, for the, us as mothers now, to our daughter-in-law, we should take our daughter-in-law as our daughters. For us to have peace, Islam encourages us that we should assist our son in choosing a good wife, a righteous and believing wife with good morals. Our sons getting to adulthood should be counseled on what to look for in being a good wife. It is not a tribal thing. It's not that it's not from our town. It's not that uh, ah, you want to go and marry a teacher. They don't have money. Mm -hmm. Do you want your son to be collecting money from his wife? So this is very important. Then we should relate with her with good and modest character so that she won't feel homesick. She won't feel that ah, I've left my parents home. What kind of family have I come to put myself in? Treat her the way you want your daughter to be treated. Do not compete with your daughter-in-law. You are in their house, you're going to visit. Your, host, your son is not coming from work. Ah, Alade, you are welcome. How are you? How is work today? I, I, I have cooked for you. You have done that with your own husband. That house is not your house. It's your son's house, and he has a wife. 
It is the duty of the wife to welcome her, hus her, her, her husband and to entertain her husband. So don't take, you are not his wife. You can't marry him. He can't marry you. Mm. Allah has made you forbidden. You have played that role with your own husband. Leave the, the wife to play that role with her own husband too. It is her own duty. Don't deny her. So we shouldn't create competition between our, 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 with our daughter-in-law. Let her run our house the way she wants it. Avoid negative uh, comments and feeling that he has come to snatch your son from you. You equally snatch somebody else's son uh -huh. if that is the case. Uh -huh. So let her live her life with her husband in peace. She is only fulfilling her Allah given duties that she'll be rewarded from. So it is not in the character of a, a, a good Muslim mother-in-law to start competing with the daughter-in-law for the love of her or of the son. And of course, where the son is well trained Islamically too, he will know where to strike the balance between the mother and his wife. So that is why the training of both male and female is very important. The counseling that the male and the female must get before getting married is very important. So at the same time, you should appreciate her and praise her for whatever good deed she does to you. Because it is not mandatory. She is only doing sadako by doing it. If she didn't do those things, she will not be punished for it. The only way she could be punished is instigating your husband against you. That's all. So appreciate it. You came to the house, she cooked, she was coming to visit you, she bought you a gift. Appreciate her. She is only managing to cope, the way you manage to cope in your marriage too. She is struggling because your house is not her house. There is no way you treat her the way her parents would treat her. So we should appreciate her and praise her good deeds. At the same time, overlook her faults. As known as fault like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If she were to be your daughter, would you not overlook her fault? So she's somebody's says daughter. She, you went to, to their house to request to marry her for your son. Under the promise that you take very good care of her. So nobody is faultless. Overlook her fault. Don't capitalize on her fault. And that's one very difficult area between us as parents and in-laws. To our children as parents, we don't praise them when they do good, but we spit the heavens when anything goes wrong. Mm. And of course, some children will take it to the bar and say, my mother will notice when I do bad things. Mm. Because when they do good things, they we don't no notice commendation. anything. There is no commendation. So the same thing goes for the daughter-in-law. Let's appreciate and overlook their fault. We can equally give her a gift. She came home for Ilea. Even if it is just onions or, or palm oil or whatever, give it to her too. And when she's also coming, she didn't come empty handed. It will increase the love between you. Be patient in the face of her bad attitude and repel evil with good. Sometimes you come up with bad attitude. But when we are patient, we'll be able to make the necessary corrections. Because what is important is we want her to change for the better. We are not happy with her bad attitude. All we wanted as a good Muslim is that she's of good behavior. That is what should be of interest to her. And by so doing, we should give her good counsel. You share your, your own experience on how to overcome some of, how you overcome some of your own problems during your own matrimonial years. The Prophet says, Adin in Osea. Religion is good counseling. So it is very important we take note of this. Part of this is that we should be fair and just in settling disputes between her and your son. Allah enjoined us in Quran chapter 6 verse 152, that's right and arm. Allah said, whenever you speak, speak justly, even if a near relative is concerned. Don't cover up your son for doing what is not good to his wife. Don't cover him up. Tell him the right thing to do. He is going out, the wife is asking for something from him to do some things in the house, and he's nagging at her, call your son and tell him, if you have that money, give it to her. It's her right. Or where do you want her to get the care given from? So treat her the way you want your daughter to be treated in her own matrimonial home. 
avoid repeating the same thing that you consider as bad experience. Hmm. We enjoy passing around the vicious circle of bad things. Your own in laws treated you badly. Must you treat your own daughter in law badly too? Hmm. Then the vicious circle continues. Let us break it and not pass our bad experiences. The Prophet told us he is not a Muslim who does not want for his brothers what he wants for himself. If you want your own in laws to be good to you, they were not. Be good to your daughter in law. Show the world that there is opposite of the attitude, general attitude that is seen with people. At the same time, to our son in law, let our son treat, our, treat your son in law as your son. Assist your daughter. That's the first step in choosing a pious and righteous husband. Prophet Salam counseled us. If there comes to you one whose religious commitment and character you are pleased with, then marry your daughter to him. If you don't do so, it will be a cause of fitness and widespread mischiefs on earth. To a lot of parents today, they want husband that is rich, that has position, that has a name, that you, when you mention the name, people will be respected. That is impiety. They look at, uh, down on others and say, how can my son, daughter marry a teacher? Mm. One teacher, poor teacher. Mm. What does he have? I cannot suffer, my daughter suffers. So. Mm. She has forgotten that money does not buy happiness. So when a pious husband comes, marry your daughter to him. He will deal with your daughter in piety. He will deal with you, the parents, in piety. So it is very important. That is the beginning. When you marry your husband to someone that is rich, you would treat your and is not morally upright. He does not have any religious training. He would treat your daughter like an animal and would treat you the parents with ignominy. Mm. So it is very important. And of course, some of these things, honor, money, positions, they don't last forever. It is another that gives and takes it. The pious man that you think is poor today can become rich tomorrow. But with his piety, he will still remain a pious man. So it is very important. That is the beginning. And most of the time, it is we mothers that are the center of it all. Mm. So, and it is a fundamental error in establishing a home. And that's why we see a lot of problems in Muslim homes today. So, part of it is that we should respect and honor him. You respect and appreciate him. This will make him to feel among and treat you with love and honor. That will eventually translate to your daughter. Mm. Sometimes husband will be afraid of reacting to the wife because of the honor they get from the parents. Most especially the mother. Oh, if not for mama, I know what I can do. That is respect for you and that is protection for your daughter. And that is why our mothers in the olden days, they held on to these things. Mm. They treat their son-in-law like kings. And you will now see the son rather than reacting to the daughter oh, who come okay. and report back at home, Mama, come and see what Kikelomo did. Is it good like that? My son, don't mind her. Okay. Let her come and meet me here. Mm -hmm. She will meet me good now. You, do, you just don't mind her. Don't mind her. So it turns, eventually the home will be peaceful because he is rest assured that the mother will play the role of a mother that will guide the daughter right. Unlike the mother that is ready to fight it, finish. And you struggle the daughter, oh, yeah, pack your things and let us go home. Thereby creating destructions of generations that belong to that particular family. Mm. So, my dear sisters, help your daughter to become a good wife because her paradise lies under the feet of her husband. Assist her with good counsel at all times that will make her house peaceful, that will make her a source of happiness to her husband. Be fair and just during dispute. When anything happens, do not be biased in favor of your daughter. Correct her weaknesses and let her know. You don't address your husband like that. What you have said is no good. A woman that is seeking paradise will not treat her husband that way. Don't plate it for that in your own home. Hmm. Even if you're supposed to say sorry, he's the one that is wrong. He will still come back and say sorry. You're all saying sorry for us. No matter. It is then the woman who have a space to sit in that house. But where the issue happens and between your daughter and the son-in-law, whether it is to her advantage or not, you take side. 
with your daughter. You are sending the lady packing from that house. Avoid negative comments about your son, your, 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 uh, about him to your daughter or any other person in the family for that matter. Everybody has their own fault. So treat your son-in-law the way you want your son to be treated by his in-laws. And of course, my dear sisters, because of time, the family is a sacred institution. That's where I'm, I'm concluding. The family is a very sacred institution that needs protections of all, especially the elders. So we in-laws, be it daughter, be it son, be it mother-in-law, be father-in-law, sister-in-law, don't leave your own husband in the house and come and scatter your brother's house. Mm. You cannot marry him. Treat your brother's wife the way you want your sister, to, you want you to be treated by your own in-laws in your own house. After all, you are in somebody else's house. Even if your in-laws come to scatter your own house, it's not enough a premise for you to come and start scatter another person's house. Don't be jealous of her because her own house is peaceful and in your own house there's fire. Look at what is actually causing fire in your own house. Eh? My own husband does not have enough money to give us for food. And you, you are here. He's buying clothes for you. He's doing this. He's doing that. He will go to your own house. He will treat your mother. He will buy a clinic for your mother. He will do this and that. He will not send you a message. Leave her alone to live in peace in her own house. Probably by so doing, Allah will grant you peace in your own house too. Mm. So we all need to come together and protect the family from disintegrating. The family is a menace to the society as we speak. So it is very, very important. We need to turn the part of honor in dealing with in-laws. Either you as a wife, treat your, throw the part of honor in dealing with your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your sisters and brother-in-law and his entire family. You have gone to meet them. In that family, your children will grow up. He who lives in a glass house, do not throw stone. So let us throw the part of honor. And we should avoid being traditional enemies. That is a tradition for mother-in-law and daughter-in-law not to agree. There are situations where the mother-in-law will even send the daughter-in-law to their son to demand for what they wanted. And that's where there is love. That's where there is peace. That's where there is harmony. We should remember what goes round comes, comes around. around. What goes round comes, comes around. around. Whatever you throw for will come back to you. Whatever good you do, fall in us. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. If you do good, you are doing it for your own soul. It will come back to you. If you do otherwise, it is for yourself. It will come back to you. Akuna hawla haza. Astaghfirullah alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That are just those bullet points, eating the, the, the matter at the, at the exact places. Our mothers have said it all. I'm saying Jazakum Allah Karen to your mother again. You are fed up with her from your wealth of knowledge. She has let us know that the family is a unit that must not disintegrate from our own part. We should all play our role as daughters, as wives, as mothers, and as in-laws, when we fall in those places that we might fall into. We are daughters today, we might be mothers-in-law tomorrow. We are wives today, we might become grandparents and grand-in-laws tomorrow. So, so let us all pray our part. Charity begins at home. The family is a unit that must not disagree. Let there be peace in our hearts, in our homes, and the entire nation that we live in. We pray Allah Taala brings to God to the world. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu liyastadhinkum alladheena malakat aymanukum walladheena lam yablughu alhulum minkum walladheena lam yablughu alhulum minkum thalatha marrat من قبل صلاة الفجر وحين تضعون ثيابكم من الظهيرة ومن بعد صلاة العشاء ثلاث عورات لكم ليس عليكم ولا عليهم جناح بعدهم طوافون عليكم بعضكم على بعض كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات والله عليم حكيم وإذا بلغ الأطفال منكم الحلم فليستأذنوا كما استأذن الذين من قبلهم 
كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته والله عليم حكيم. Now, Alam Zarabi, I mean, that's been the end of this session. Now, till we meet again, we implore us all to visit our pages. I'll, I'm not on Facebook and on YouTube, and keep up with our other channels that we can always learn from now. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah.